May the words that I speak and the words we each hear and understand be those chosen by you, Lord. For you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I have a confession to make. The passage today from Romans 12 has been one that I found very difficult to base a sermon on. Looked at in isolation, it seems to offer a bit of a ragbag of advice around quite a lot in telling us how we should act and maybe leaving us or at least me a bit confused by the end of it. Every sentence in itself seems to offer some useful advice. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Well that's a good approach to the vagaries of everyday life. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. I think life is too short not to. But I'm not sure I entirely agree with everything that Paul says. For example, the bit about not taking revenge, not repaying evil for evil, is absolutely right, because God, not us, is the judge of behaviour. It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. And Paul's right when he says that we should repay an evil deed with a good one. But when he says that by doing so you will heap burning coals on your enemy's head, he almost seems to be saying, at least to me, that you should be doing good, not for the rightness of the act, but in order to make the other person feel bad, and by doing so to make yourself feel good by comparison. I'm not quite sure I agree with that particularly when we seem to be living in a world where so much depends on comparing ourselves to others, in finding ways to show our value to prospective or current employers, or to show why we should be chosen rather than the next person, or maybe in the current climate, where jobs are more under threat than for some time, to show why we're of more value to the organisation than the next person. There is a real temptation even for Christians, even for Christians, in the workplace, in the family, among friendship groups, to make yourself look good by making another person look bad by comparison. The danger of the competitive culture is that we actually start to believe our own propaganda and to value others accordingly. Now, I don't think that this is what Paul is meaning at all, but it's a web that I've managed to weave by taking one verse out of the context of the letter and running with it. In fact, I think there's a very strong thread running through what Paul's saying, particularly in the context of the whole letter. Today's passage follows on from the first half of chapter 12, and the root of today's passage is in last week's reading, where Tessa talked about the body of Christ, and about using our gifts and acting in concert with each other. How and why we are to do this was explained in verse 3. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Paul is aiming to show us how to live in community. How, as Tessa was talking about last week, to live as members of one body, the body of Christ. Amongst other things, he says, love must be sincere. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. So it's about looking out for the needs of others and offering practical support and a generous welcome. He says, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony with one another. So it's also about listening to what another person is saying, about trying to recognise their feelings and to respond in the right way. It's not always easy, I know. I've been told by those close to me that when somebody is upset about an issue, it's not always helpful to go straight to offering practical solutions, but rather to stay a while in the zone of sympathy. 
bless them, I'm still learning. Paul also says, do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Paul's guidance on how to live as a Christian, not only in a church community, but also in the wider world, is about a radical reappraisal of the way that our society often works, about a rejection of the cult of individualism, of the mentality, dare I say it, of because I'm worth it. As Tessa reminded you last week, you are, you absolutely are worth it in the eyes of God. But you're worth it, not because of what you've done, but because of who you are, a child of God. You're worth it because everyone is worth it. And what Paul is ultimately saying is that living in community, loving your neighbour as yourself, is all about starting from the premise that your neighbour is your equal. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought means do not think of yourself more highly than the next person. As a church, it's important that we don't think of ourselves more highly than we think of the community in which we're based. During this time of COVID, we've offered help and support to any in the community who need it, as we would offer support to any friend who needed it, without requiring them to answer a list of questions about their faith position. We have, in the good old days, offered facilities like Messy Church, Connections, Holiday Club and Summer Lunches on the basis of need alone. We support local charities like the Food Bank without questioning their understanding of the Trinity. We, as a church, offer a Christian funeral service with just a couple of stipulations as to content to all who ask for it without questioning the depth of faith commitment of the deceased or of the bereaved family. What Paul is recommending to us is a way of valuing others, both inside the church and outside, that leads us to serve them joyfully and to serve them without calculation of reward. I think that viewing Paul's talk of burning coals in this context is much more helpful, certainly to me. The result of our good deeds may indeed be a feeling of shame or regret in the mind of another person, now that they've seen a different way to behave. But that doesn't need to be our reason for having done the good deed. The reason for having done the good deed is our desire to show the same love to other people that God has shown to us to value them as God values them, indeed as God values us. So, in the understanding that Paul wants us to model generous behaviour, not to shame others, but to bless them, what can we do this week to support and encourage each other in this mission? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for everything. That you have blessed us with. May we use each and every gift to bless others, to shine your light in the world and to make your love known to all we meet. In Jesus' name. Amen.